Hey guys and girls, today I'm going to be teaching you how you can do your very own watercolour hummingbird in less than half an hour. I promise you it's really not going to take long. The most part of it is probably going to be the sketching because the watercolour side of it doesn't take long to do at all and it's probably the most fun to be perfectly honest. If you are new to my channel, I am Benita and you are watching Benita Doodles and I offer a variety of art videos as well as tutorials, little hacks and just generally fun things. So if you enjoy your stay, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification for all. And yeah, hopefully we'll see you around the arty family. All you need to do to get started is grab yourself some watercolour paper or mixed media paper try and ensure that you're using a really good quality paper because if you use copy paper or mark paper it's just not going to work as well and you won't get that uh, sort of release of watercolour that you get on this particular type of paper. It's made for watercolour for the exact reason is that it helps it feather and spread which is what you want ideally for this type of image. Grab yourself, it doesn't have to be a hummingbird if that's not what you want to do, but grab yourself a reference picture, pexels or Pixabay is a really, really good place to get them from. Please don't bundle along and especially if you're gonna be looking at selling these at a later date to Pinterest or Google or anything like that because you cannot guarantee that the reference pictures that you get there can be used later on for you to make money from. You can always use a standard photo stock reference and just make your own Sort of image from it it doesn't have to be well you can do whatever you like really just keep shapes simplified like for the head I've got the circle then I've got like a elongated shape coming away from that very basic line for the wings just getting his body shape down to the proportions that I feel I am happy with and this sort of drawing style I suppose is to get you in a place where you can have the freedom of doing things in an expressionate way they don't have to be tight or realistic it doesn't even have to look like a wing in all fairness because that's really what the paint is there to do for us so when you get your line work down and I intend to keep majority maybe 90% of this on time lapse because I want you to see how quick and easy it is to render up an image of this style when you've had a bit of practice with the medium and the tools that you want to be using. Keep things really simple at this stage if you're very new to doing this type of style or even drawing or even the medium that you're going to be using. The simpler you can keep it to begin with the easier it is to learn to play with the tools don't overcomplicate it to begin with, just keep everything nice, simple, short lines, sketchy style, it really doesn't matter. Just have a bit of fun with it and you know, just have a bit of a play with the type of I don't know, animal or creature that you enjoy the most. I'm using here a Spectrum Noir Art Liner brush pen because I wanted it to have the thick and the thin lines. If you're going to use a liner pen, you need to ensure that it is one that is not water activated, so it has to be water resistant. Give it time to dry in between you putting the ink down and when you put your watercolour down. Even though it is water resistant, you still need to give it a bit of time to soak into the paper and sort of let it dry really. I honestly absolutely love the Spectrum Noir markers because I've never had an issue with them where they run with any water or any alcohol markers. They are meant to be, or well, they are resistant, as I say, against water and alcohol. So I use them all the time when I do my work. And the brush pen is just absolutely fantastic. If you're a hand letterer or you like this sort of thick and thin line, or even if you're an anime artist or a manga artist, they're absolutely brilliant for that type of work. You can see here how simple I have kept these lines. I've got like one little flick up on that wing there so far and that's just enough to indicate that there is going to be a wing there. The eyes are very good at placing things and filling space so we don't have to do it. So you can get away with actually having some really really simple lines going down and just having fun with the watercolour element. 
You can use a watercolour palette, you can use inks, you can use watercolour pens, markers, anything really that's watercolour activated. Even if you had acrylic, I think as long as you watered it down enough, you would have the ability to do this type of drawing. So if you have a favourite medium to do this in, give it a whirl. It's not going to hurt you. But if you want to spread your wings, pardon the pun, then certainly have a go with the medium that you're not used to. If you're not used to doing watercolours and you've always wanted to get into it, this is a really good, easy tutorial to have a go at. The inks that I'm using are the Spectrum Noir Aqua Tints and they pack a punch of colour. If you've followed me for a while, you've seen in previous tutorials where I have used these inks or I've used the pens, that because they are dye based, they are absolutely full of pigment. They're so easy to blend together. As you can see here, I'm just simply using two colors at the moment. And it's just a case of having a bit of freedom with it, really. You want it to have a bit of an uncontrolled feeling. When you see these types of drawings, your paintings, I should say, you you can see that they're not controlled. I'm not explaining myself in a very good way at all. And um, yeah, maybe doing this late at night wasn't such a good idea. Maybe I need a coffee. Anywho, let's try and explain that again. The point of these drawings is to make them look organic. That's the word I'm looking for organic and free and unrestricted and just fun and having that freedom of expression on this type of drawing is so liberating even if it turns out to be a load of rubbish which i promise you it won't have a go because it really opens up doors and gives you a bit of freedom with art that you don't necessarily get when you do realistic drawing and pastel work and things like that which is why I love doing this medium because it gives me the freedom to do what the hell I like and make a blooming mess. So give it a go. And it's great for kids as well. It's a really fun way of getting kids into watercolour because when I mean, you could print off, if it's just for the kiddos, just print off some really basic shapes and let them go to town with this type of thing. But I wanted to keep it, as I say, really simple, keep the colours simple and I wanted to make this into a tutorial for you guys and I wanted it to be an accessible tutorial, I like that word today, that anybody, and I do mean anybody, can have a go and succeed at. If you are not confident on the drawing side, as I say, please just download some images. If it's just going to be for you to practice, then download some images and just have a bit of a go, have a bit of a play. It, just bear in mind, if you're going to be printing it on printer paper, it's more than likely going to run the printer ink. So um, just be careful or just trace it through. Uh, shove it up against the window, put it on a light box and just trace it through on some mixed media paper. And then that way you've got the reference to use over and over again and you can practice it as many times as you want. Now I'm going to go through the colours that I used in a moment in case you are familiar with Spectrum Noir and you do have some of their colours. You may not have these Aquatint pots but some of the colours roll over into their other products. So yeah, we'll go through that now. If you don't have any of the Spectrum Noir products at all, it's absolutely fine. Just have a look at these colours online, go and Google them and you can match them up if you wanted to do like for like to what I've done with products that you might have at home or watercolours that you might have at home. If not, just choose whichever colours you want because I think the fact that you've got the freedom to do what you like means that you can express yourself in the way that you like. So don't feel constrained to having to use the colours that I've used on this particular bird. These just happen to be some of my favourite colours on the whole planet. So I use them quite a lot because I love the way that they go together really and I like the vibrancy on them. Don't be afraid to experiment about putting colours on top. Um, if you want to check any palettes, just do them maybe on a scrap bit of paper. That way you can check if they blend okay. As I say, if you're going to be tracing through an image, just practice as much as you want and then it doesn't matter if you go wrong. It's just all about the learning process. Just be very free and make sure that you've got a good amount of water on your brush. Work on a dry piece of paper. It does help. If you work on wet paper, the spread is a lot less controllable unless you want it to go wherever the hell it likes. So in that case, then, um, you know, fill your boots. So go ahead and wet the paper. But use the paper, the paper, 
use the paint like I am here to create the shapes that you are wanting to achieve. So with the green, the jade green, I've used it to actually create the shape of the wing. Then that way I'm not having to draw that in and it keeps the softness that I think watercolour gives these images. And even though the watercolours are really bright, I keep saying watercolours but technically I suppose they're inks, but even though they're inks and they're vibrant, they still have this softness about them and I think that's why, again, I love working with this type of medium because... I don't know, you can just get so many feelings from them. I'm going to get all emotional now. You know what I mean. You'll, you'll see, if you've never done it before and you have a go, you'll know exactly what I mean. And P.S. It's addictive. So I'm afraid you can't blame me. I'm putting a little caveat in here now that it is not my fault should you become addicted to doing these types of watercolours. Because they're so fun, they're easy to render up. You know, we're, what, nearly 11 minutes into the video and we've pretty much completed the image so this is how quick and I, I I do understand that I've been doing this for a very long time and what takes me 10 minutes may not take you 10 minutes it may take you an hour but I promise you if you keep practicing and keep having a go and keep trying you will be doing these in that time as well I've always been told by various people that I work very quickly anyway and I think that some of it's because sometimes, not all the time, sometimes I take a bit of an attitude that what the heck, if it turns out not quite like I wanted it to, then so be it. But if it turns out okay, then, you know, then I'm going to be happy. But if you take away the stress and the strain of learning a new medium and trying to be perfect at it straight away, it makes it a lot more fun and it makes you want to pick up your paintbrush and carry on trying. I do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and if you do want some more popping up just let me know in the comments below. Happy painting and make sure you share and I shall see you guys in the next video. Bye!